Hi everybody. Welcome. This is day number 77. Okay, I'm on time today. That's very unusual. Uh, my name is Eric Rhodes and uh, welcome to Thursday, Thursday the 11th of June. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about art, we're going to talk about art instruction video, and we're going to talk about display magic, meaning how do you display your paintings either online or in a gallery or at a show to maximize the price and maximize the sales. Sound like a good idea? We'll talk about that today uh, towards the end of the broadcast. Now, I want to tell you that uh, first off, you win prizes here by making comments. And we love it when you say where you're from. A lot of you have been here every single day and sometimes new people wander in every single day and tell us that they're new. Last night uh, or this morning, I guess this morning, I was nice on Instagram and I got an invitation to Kashmir. I think that's pretty cool too. And so, um, and they were, they were saying that in Kashmir they have a, a limit on the amount of internet that they can use and that they've just been barely able to watch some of the videos that we've been producing, but it's been very helpful to them in Kashmir. I guess uh, this person and their friends are getting together to come over and watch them because of the limited internet. So one world of artists and we're all together, we're in this together, we're all suffering the same kinds of things. And uh, so great to know that we're part of a bigger family. All right. So I want to remind you of a couple of things. In the month of June, we're giving away a full registration to either the Plen Air Convention or the Figurative Art Convention, two conventions that we do, and uh, our convention in Santa Fe. Or you can go to the Baltimore Figurative Art Convention and Expo in uh, uh, October, October 29th. As a matter of fact, on the 30th, we have a big Halloween party. We also have the world's largest studio, so you can watch all day what you're learning. And then if you, you have the option of going into the world's largest studio with, I don't know, we, last year we had probably 10 or 12 models. This year we may have more, more or less, we don't know. And, and so it's a big ballroom filled with models. Some of them have clothes, some of them don't. It's up to you. And then you get to practice what you've learned with those models, which is a whole lot of fun. Uh, we also have some evening sessions for those of you who don't want to do that. And of course, we're going to have the big party. Uh, and this year at the Figurative Art Convention and Expo, I've expanded the base a little bit. I wanted to try something new because I had this dream. The dream is about uh, a conversation I had with William Bouguereau, the great uh, artist in Paris. And we were at this dinner with all these great artists, and, and he stood up and he toasted to the whole of art. And I said, what does that mean? And he said, well, we as artists tend to get, well, you know, if a figurative artist, I'm studying figurative. He said, but we become more well-rounded. We become better artists. If we layers or landscape painters, we're putting figures into our paintings. If we're still life painters, we might be putting a landscape in the background, or we might be putting a still life in a figurative painting. So I have uh, some of the world's leading artists coming in to teach you those disciplines too. Uh, still life painting, landscape painting, uh, floral painting, and some other things. So it's going to give you a lot of options. And so if there's something on stage that doesn't scratch your itch, you can go to another stage and watch something that does. And so we have, I don't know, we have three or four stages typically. And so, uh, and we've got uh, some great uh, masters, we're going to announce our Lifetime Achievement Award as soon as we confirm uh, that this person is going to, uh, we're, that, well, this person's already going to be there, but we're confirming that. Anyway, so uh, if you want to win uh, a ticket to one of those, you go to StreamlineGiveaway.com, StreamlineGiveaway.com, and that's, uh, we're Streamline Art Video, and Streamline owns Fine Art Connoisseur, Plein Air Magazine, and the conferences, and so on. So StreamlineGiveaway.com before the end of the month. You only have to do it one time, all right? And so uh, today we have two great video samples for you. We've been doing this every single day, uh, 77 days in a row. We are exhausted. You know, a lot of my folks have not had a day off um, uh, in our production team and our social media team. Uh, and we've had, you know, got somebody who's stepping in to help one of them once in a while, but it's been tough. 
And so uh, I'm fine with it. I love showing up every day, so I'm cool. I'd, I'd show up every day no matter what. Um, I'm, uh, I'm technically on vacation because I'm up at the lake, and, uh, but you know what? I love doing this. Uh, today at 3 p.m., we have the great Chinese master Wei Han Lu. Wei Han was a friend of mine in San Francisco. We used to go plein air painting together. He would teach at the Academy of Art and is a brilliant, brilliant painter. Uh, very, very well known for his figures. And he's going to do a video today on expressive figure painting. That's at 3 p.m. And you'll find that at Streamline Art Video on Facebook, not on my page. Streamline Art Video on Facebook. And you can also find it at Streamline Art Video on YouTube. And it comes live. So if you just go there and subscribe, it'll pop up for you. Also, we've started adding at 9 p.m. Uh, uh, video segments so that different time zones. Uh, somebody told me that they were getting up at three o'clock in the morning to watch these things. Uh, so maybe these time zones will help. We've been literally hearing from the world and uh, which is quite frankly what prompted the idea I'm going to talk about in a minute. But uh, 9 p.m. today we have the great California impressionist Carl Dempwolf. Uh, Carl is in one of the top galleries in the Los Angeles Pasadena area. His work is in high demand. He has a very stylized, reminds me much of Edgar Payne or Granville Redman, you know, that, that old California look. And it's so pleasing to the eye and it sells so well and you might really enjoy that. He's a really, really good teacher. So that's California Impressionism tonight at 9 p.m. And this, these of course are Eastern times. Now, yesterday I announced that I'm running out of prizes because I've been giving away so much stuff. And so I'm, I'm uh, uh, coming up with different things that we're giving away that we still have. Yesterday I announced that we're giving away a Plint Air Magazine apron. I don't have one to show you. I thought I should have brought one to, to show, but I didn't. So that goes to Roberta Barnes in Nebraska. How about a thumbs up, congratulations, or a, a heart or a like button for for uh, Roberta Barnes. Thanks for tuning in, Roberta, and I hope you're here, and we'll get that apron off to you. And we, of course, hope you'll post a picture of you wearing your stylish plein air apron. Also, I uh, gave away, I do have that, gave away a pair of my value specs, which help you see values when you're painting indoors or outdoors are very, very handy uh, because uh, our eyes are always being fooled, and it's uh, also very stylish to wear red glasses. And so, um, Anyway, uh, that goes to Deanna, hang on a second, Deanna Pierce Colbow. Deanna Pierce Colbow from White Bear Lake in Saskatchewan. How about our international friends, our people in, in Canada, yay. Now, if you're outside of the country and you're making comments, make sure you say where you're from, because we always try to give away something outside the U.S. as well as inside the U.S., and so, uh, congratulations to Deanna. Now, today at 3 p.m., oh, I told you about today, didn't I? Uh, yes, okay. So, um, today I have some really good prizes for you. I have uh, two different DVDs, and these are some of the early ones that we did, and they're some of the best we've ever done. Uh, we did, first off, we did a seascapes video, painting seascapes. I did this in Maine. I told the story about how we set up in the rain under a tent because it, the, the sea was roaring. The waves were splashing high, and we wanted to capture that, so painting in a storm. So we set up under a tent, did the video under the tent with, with uh, Gene Perry, and it is a wonderful video, and somebody's going to win that tomorrow, and that's uh, seascapes video with Gene Perry. Also, uh, John Cosby, who, who does a, has a video that we did on in plein air impressionism. John is probably, I, well, I don't want to offend anybody, but he's certainly one of the best instructors on earth when it comes to plein air painting. I got more out of that video as a plein air painter than almost anything that I've done because it's, it's just so valuable. So we're going to give away also a copy of the John Cosby impressionism both of those are great videos. Of course, we're trying to help you. We're trying to keep you entertained, engaged, uh, excited. Uh, we, we've got, we want you to be distracted. Now, I'm not saying you should ignore what's going on in the world. These things are important, and, and uh, we don't want to ignore them, but we also 
if we sit around and we worry all the time, it's just going to it's going to impact our health, our our immune systems, our mood, and so we've got to get away and do something that we love, get a little bit of distraction. So. Uh, it, this is helpful for us. We're a small little business. We make videos and, and magazines and stuff uh, for artists and uh, we're trying to help you by letting you see these videos. It helps the artists that we partner with because they get some income. If you guys see something you like, we're giving you some discounts. We normally are not a discounting company and we're doing it to kind of get through these rough times, quite frankly. Uh, and so some of you are picking up some really good bargains and, and you know, this won't last forever. I don't know how long it'll last. When we put them up there, that's when the discount, uh, in, in the replays, the discounts don't necessarily apply. So if you see a replay on YouTube or something, those discounts have disappeared. The discounts are for the day of broadcast. Or if we're broadcasting it again, we, live, we make them live again. So grab them while you can. Anyway, hope that helps. Now, I want to talk just briefly about uh, marketing. First off, um, I, I want to put a word in front of marketing because it'll make some of you feel better. The word is ethical, ethical marketing. Now, I think all of us are ethical people. I would hope so. And we want to do ethical marketing. Now, uh, marketing in the eyes of some artists has a tough connotation because they don't see themselves as marketers. And the reality is that as artists, if we're in the business of selling art, now if you're not in the business of selling art, it's a different story, but if you have to make your living or you want to get a little extra money from selling paintings, you are in a business. So you have to develop, my dad said to me when I was 17 years old, he said, son, there are different hats that you have to wear in a business. You, some days you put on your business hat, your sales hat, your accounting hat, you know, your marketing hat, uh, your engineering hat, whatever it happens to be. And uh, I like to say that that's developing muscles, right? You, embracing the things that you need to embrace to make your business stronger doesn't make you any less of who you are, any less of being an artist. What it does is you develop muscles and those muscles if you develop you know you got to have an accounting muscle you got to have a sales muscle you got to have a relationship muscle and and so we develop these muscles to get better at selling our products or, or making our products available or shipping our products or whatever they are so don't look at it as something that is evil look at it as something that's helpful just make sure you do it with ethics, right? And you have to find your own style and your own feeling. And some people, um, I, I used to be the guy that it was like, I would email somebody once a year and somebody said to me, you know, Eric, you know, you've got you've to email people a little bit more than that because a lot of people aren't going to notice the first time. And, and I was like, no, no, that's enough. Once a year is enough. And, and you know, I was just not making any money. I, my business was just dying. And so I had to learn some of these techniques. And, and uh, what I've learned here, what I'm teaching you, I've taught, I've, adv I, I've advised people in advertising when I was in the radio industry, built companies uh, with marketing, but I, I threw away a lot of money and made a lot of mistakes along the way. So what I'm teaching you is not what you're gonna get from people who typically teach art marketing. What I'm going to do is give you real life scenarios and based on what I've learned throughout all those years, but plus on top of that, what I've learned as being an art publisher, helping literally hundreds of artists, helping them with their marketing, help them build their brands, help them become, uh, you know, selling a lot of work or becoming really well known. And so that's what marketing is about. So when you hear me talking marketing, please know I'm always talking about ethical marketing. I don't believe in manipulation. Now, there are tools that will allow you to make things work a little better, but it's not manipulation. And, and so what I'm going to show you today is a tool. Now, I was uh, having a dialogue with an artist friend of mine about pricing, and the, the, the question came up about, well, what is the right pricing? How do I determine price? I said, you know, your prices, I think your prices are too low. Um, but, you know, how do you compare? What is the difference? And pricing is, you know, there's a whole lot of psychology behind pricing. We're going to touch on a tiny, tiny little 
segment of that today. But when someone first visits your website, or when someone first visits a gallery show, or uh, maybe you have a tent show, when they first visit, they're going to get an instant first impression of you and of your pricing. Now the question is, what is the impression that you want to leave with them? Do you want to leave the impression that you're inexpensive, uh, fairly priced, expensive, too expensive? Where do you want to be in that? Now I've told the story, I'll tell it again for those of you who tuned in, but the idea is that price sets a quality tone. Uh, the amount of money that you charge for something says to certain people that you are of a certain quality. And you might be saying to yourself, well, I want to sell at a lower price because I want people to be able to afford my work. That's fine if you want to do that. But you have to know that whatever you price, you're going to have to live with. And, and though you should always raise your prices a little tiny bit, you know, 5 or 10% every year if you possibly can, uh, you also need to be... Uh, aware that the lower you are, the harder it is to get up higher uh, once you start out. And so I, I've told the story of an artist friend of mine who uh, had a painting, put it in a gallery, it didn't sell, so he took it out of the gallery, put it in another gallery, doubled the price, still didn't sell, took it out, doubled the price again, still didn't sell. So he took it out, put $40,000 on it, he was just disgusted, sold first week. Right. So it depends on the audience, it depends on who's in that gallery or who's seeing it, but it also is sending a signal. I've also told the story of a guy that was in a tent show, a lady walked up, says, how much is the painting? He said, it's $4,000. She said, I'll take it, writes a check, hands him a check for $40,000. He said, ma'am, it's not $40,000, it's $4,000. And she said, well, it must not be very good anyway, and she ripped up the check and walked away. You might hear both. Uh, so, anyway. So what you want to do is think about how you display your work. And I think the first signal that you send should be the higher price signal, not the lower price signal, because you're going to understand this in a minute. So when you're displaying your paintings, whether you display this on, on your website, see, I think most people get websites completely wrong. Uh, it's just a personal opinion. No, no offense to any of you, but... Uh, what's the first impression I'm getting when I go to your website? And what is, you know, what are you trying, what message are you sending? We'll do a thing on websites one day, but how you display your work and how it's priced matters really, really importantly. So the thing you need to understand is that people need, uh, my friend Keith Cunningham calls them guardrails, right? Think about a guardrail. You're going high speed around a a curve and there's guardrails and so if you you speed and you 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 get out of control you hit a guardrail and it keeps you in line so in pricing people need guardrails they need a frame of reference and sometimes you can't be compared let's say your painting is hanging next to a cw monday painting in uh, in a gallery well um all of a sudden you have to say, well, am I being compared to that? That's why you want to control your environment a little bit. So what you want to do is you want to put up gates because people can't decide if a price is good and they can't decide the comparison. So oftentimes you'll see what I call gates where there are three prices, three price ranges. And this can be done in a lot of ways, but what happens is there's a high price on one side of the gate and there's a low price on the other side of the gate and you may think that people will all automatically default to the low price. Uh, some people will. Some people will automatically default to the high price. But most people, 80% of the people, according to research, and I was reading this again last night in a book, 80% uh, of the people will go to the middle. And so what you have to do as an artist is decide what do you want the middle to be. So I have a friend who's uh, uh, one of the most important uh, marketing guys on earth has written three New York Times best-selling books and he consults jewelry companies as one of his businesses and he told me something about the jewelry business that I never really knew but it, it really makes sense in selling art too because there's a very, very similarity because it's a it's a luxury product it's not necessarily something people have to have let's hope the wind it's windy in here let's hope it doesn't blow down my cameras so uh, he said, have you ever walked into a jewelry store 
He said, they typically, you walk into a jewelry store, the first thing you see will be one particular item, one particular ring, and they usually have the dark store a little dark, and they usually have a bright light on that one particular ring, and the price tag is there. You can see it, but just barely. It's flipped over a little bit, so you can kind of crick your neck and see it. He said, that ring is designed to set the gate. That ring is designed to set the tone for the high price. And what we do is we always set the tone three times what we want our average price to be. He said, so if we, if, if somebody walks in, they're, you know, they're young couples, they don't have any money, the first thing they're going to want to do is, the first thing the guy's going to want to do is he's going to say, hey, let's go buy that $1,000 ring, you know, that little tiny bitty diamond. And uh, on the other hand, the uh, recipient might be like, I don't know that I want that smallest diamond, but I know we can't afford the, you know, the Hope diamond here. And so what they usually end up doing is going into the middle. What the jewelry stores do is they make sure that that, that middle is where they want their price to be. So let's, let me give you some examples. Let's say the, the one, the high price one under the spotlight is $30,000. If that's the case, what's the price they want their average to be? It's $10,000. And if, they, if somebody doesn't see that $30,000 diamond, then they don't have a gate. And so what happens is people tend to lean lower. So uh, in that particular instance, and, and, and by the way, real estate agents do this all the time too. They'll show, you, uh, they'll show you a house and you're like, why are you showing me this house? This is much more expensive than what I need. Well, they're showing you that to set the gate, right? They're saying, I just thought you'd want to see this because it's got some of the characteristics and, you know, I know this isn't in your price. And so, you know, they show you a, a $500,000 house when you're looking for a $300,000 house. And then they show you a, a $200,000 house that's really crummy and, you know, it's really falling apart. So when they show you a house that's $350,000, you're willing to exceed your budget because it's in the middle. This is how this psychology works. And so how does that work in paintings? Well, uh, paintings also, were, I, I've done a lot of advising for galleries, I've done a lot of advising for artists, and this works beautifully. It really, really works. It's not manipulative, it's just human psychology. Now, you may or may not be able to see my white, uh, my white paper here uh, because of the, the light. I'll try to get it so you can see it. But imagine you're in a gallery I call this display magic. And so you walk into a gallery and you see a big painting, you see two little paintings, and you see one, uh, two medium sized paintings, you see one little tiny painting. So you walk in there and there's this beautiful Eric Capel, you know, scene, and, and you know, it's beautiful. And this painting says $30,000. All right? And this painting has um, $2,000 on it, right? So you go, all right, and this, this, these paintings are, are, are $3,000. I mean, excuse me, $10,000. So you look at this and you say, well, this is, this is a pretty good bargain. This guy's a $30,000 painter. I can own one of his or her paintings for only $10,000. And they, typically they won't pick the smaller one. Now some people will, uh, but they'll go, well, do I want to spend $2,000 to have a little tiny you know, painting I can hang in the bathroom, or do I want you know, something that's collectible? And this works like a charm. It works on your website. It works uh, anywhere. And the one thing you have to also understand is that uh, something I learned in Silicon Valley when I was raising money for a company I founded out there uh, this, uh, I had a, a person who was teaching me how to raise money and teaching me the process and they said something that I, has always stuck with me and that is that people buy based on the stories that you tell. And the stories are so important. There are people, not all people, uh, but some people really like the idea of being able to say, you know, they, they, hang, they hang that painting in their living room they're, they like to be able to say, you know that Eric Capel painting? His, his paintings sell for $30,000. He's, 
Now, they're not telling you that they paid $10,000 for that painting. They're saying, this is a $30,000 artist, and by the way, his, his prices are going up. And as a result, it's a story. And, and so when they taught me in Silicon Valley is you want to load people's lips with a story. And that's why in some of my art videos, I teach about storytelling with paintings and how to put stories on your paintings and what to say and how to craft those and so on. Because people need stories and salespeople in galleries need stories. Now, I will tell you this, that none of this will happen unless you get buy-in from the person on the, on, on the selling side, right? So uh, if I get buy-in from my art gallery to do this, they will absolutely do it because they have courage, but some, some galleries don't have courage. And um, remember I told you a story about the first time I went into a gallery and I, was, I wanted to be the highest priced painting in the gallery. I didn't know this at that time, but had I done this, I definitely would have gotten the highest price in the gallery. Uh, and I, I mean, and I would have got my price there. So think about that. So ask yourself, how can I do this on my website? How can I do this in my emails? Like if you're doing your newsletter, and I talked about the ups and downs of news, newsletters recently, how can I do this in my, in my newsletter? How can I offer the first painting be my $30,000 painting, the middle painting be my $10,000 painting, the low painting be the, the $2,000 painting. Now, an artist friend of mine sent out a, a piece last night uh, about an auction because he was moving. And so I went and I looked at everything and all things were kind of about the same price range. But uh, so it made them feel expensive, even though they were really good bargains. But if he had one in there at his normal price, or if he had said, my normal price is $5,000, but today this is $1,000, uh, if, if, if he would have made that case, and, and he made a case for the reason he was doing it, he was raising money for, for a new studio, you always, if you're lowering price, you don't just lower price unless you have a reason, because people need a reason. If you just say, well, I'm, I'm discounting all my paintings this week only, why? Give them a reason. I'm trying to raise money to, uh, to fund my new gallery, or I'm trying to raise money to buy new frames, or I'm trying, you know, I've got, give them a reason, because if you're just doing it for no reason, then people will think you do it all the time. Anyway, that is what I call display magic. I hope this has been helpful. Did this make sense to anybody? I'm gonna come up real quickly to the comments and say hi to everybody, get a little closer where I can read it, but uh, I hope this has been helpful. Remember, the law of comparison uh, has to do with gates. You always want to have gates, right? I like the first thing you see. When you walk in that gallery, I want that to be the highlight on the wall, that great big painting, and I want that visible price of, you know, maybe it's 100000 or maybe it's 200000 maybe it's 500000 depending on your level. I mean, to walk into a gallery and find a Howard Turpening painting that big, that's a million dollars. And then maybe if there's, you know, suddenly you can buy a smaller Howard Turpening painting for uh, one or two thirds that price. I doubt it in his case, because his prices are so high. Uh, he's incredible. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful. I'm Eric Rhodes from Fine Art Connoisseur and Plin Air Magazine. Remember, uh, oh, two things. Number one, streamline giveaway to win the chance to go to the Plin Air Convention. The other thing is yesterday I made a big giant mistake and I announced our new Plin Air Live uh, which is a global virtual experience. And we're now, if you go to plenairlive.com, we're now accepting your name for notification. Now, here's the problem we discovered yesterday. We, we don't know yet how many technologically we can get on this because technology has its limits, but we know we can't get everybody on it. We have a problem already. There's probably three, 4,000 people who want to attend and there's probably not that many slots. So what we're going to do is we're going to do first come, first serve. If you go in there and put your name in, we're going to, in the order, once we announce it, we're going to give you a little bit of time to decide. But, uh, and then if you say no, then we're going to add somebody else on the list who hasn't yet um, uh, had a chance to get in because we've got we to gotta manage that. But I gave you the wrong dates yesterday. The dates, the proper dates, Hold these dates. It's a four-day four day event. Uh, it is uh, July 15th through 18th. I had it in my calendar wrong because I had an original date we were talking about. 
July 15th through 18th. I'm going to go back to Austin, Texas to our studio. We're going to be live in the studio. We've got a bunch of people coming in. We've got a, a cool things going on. And we have a beginner's day for brand new baby plein air painters on the 14th. Now you have to get the four day package to be able to get the beginner thing, which will start on the 14th. That'll be five days for you beginners and you will rock it after those five days. And quite frankly, everybody's going to rock it. You're just going to, yeah, people are going to be like, your paintings, they're so good. What happened? And you're like, plein air alive, baby. Plein air alive. Okay. Anyway, nice to talk to you guys today. Thanks for coming in. And, uh, oh, where do I sign up for plein air live? Well, you can't sign up yet because we don't, we want to announce it once we've got all the speakers and everything signed up. We've got some pretty amazing ones, uh, who are going to do a lot of cool stuff. And, and, uh, so we, we're not going to announce it until we got a lot of that filled in, but we, you go to plenairlive.com and put your name and info in and your country. We're curious. Now, we're hearing from people all over the world already. I heard from uh, Francesco Fontana in Italy yesterday. I heard from the UK. I heard from Kashmir. heard from Norway. Uh, this is going to be the first time in history we have had the entire plein air community all around the world uh, together. Now, some of them are going to have to get up in the middle of the night to watch, but they'll have replays so they can watch later too. But to be on the live experience, and we're going to be interacting with these people and with you guys, and we're, we're going to do like we do at the plein air convention too. We're going to end every day with live painting in beautiful places, and, and you're going to love how we do that. It is so, so cool. I don't think you've done this before. It's going to be very, very cool. Anyway, I hope that answers your question. Do we have any other comments? Make sure you make comments because uh, how cool at the lake. Yes, it is cool, Jules. Jules, uh, uh, it's about 50 degrees here and raining. It really rained this morning. I hope the marketing tips have been helpful. Um, anyway, thank you guys for watching. Uh, there's quite a few of you watching today, and so it's been very cool. And uh, is this helpful? Um, Maybe Christina can help us with that. I'm not sure what that was. Just try it again and work this time and follow the advice. Okay. Thank you from Peoria, Illinois. On the wait list, says Julie, uh, Joanna Wright. Okay, good. All right. Getting some likes on Instagram. I'm not seeing any likes or, uh, or heart buttons on, on Facebook. I guess that nobody's happy. Rain is good. You bet rain is good. Uh, I'm, I, I actually, I'm in my bare feet. I shouldn't say that, but... Uh, my shoes got wet this morning, and uh, so I'm, I got to go buy a pair of shoes because I didn't bring any, any uh, wet, any boot kind of shoes with me. I forgot. All right. Yes, sir. Thanks. Now, now, wait a minute now. Sir, let's talk about that. Uh, when somebody calls me sir, that's very polite. Thank you for that. But sir is my grandfather, you know, Mr. Rhodes. People call me Mr. Rhodes. I'm Eric very informal. You don't need to do sir with me. I really appreciate the respect, but we're very informal around here. Thank you, Eric. Good. You got it right now. Thanks, guys. Uh, I will turn you around and I will give you a little view of the lake. Uh, that's your little bonus prize for today, and I hope I don't mess things up. So here we go. I'm using my plein air easel. By the way, I painted yesterday. Do you want to see what I painted? I will probably make a mess of this because it's not dry. Uh, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but I painted, I painted my boat house. Uh, it's a little canoe house. It's kind of rocky. It's not, it's, it's, it's not showing very well on the screen. But anyway, I sat out on the dock and I painted that last night and it needs some work, but it was a lot of fun to do it. Now I got paint all over my hands. So what's a fellow to do? Okay. So, paint on the hands, turning the easel around. Here we go. Here we go. Hopefully things don't fall over. Trying not to let them fall over. Uh-oh. Easel fell apart. There we go. Okay, now we're starting to see some, some lake. There we go. This, we like the trees in front because it makes us feel very secluded. All right. Well, have a really terrific day. I'll just leave that on for you for a minute, and then you can just take a, a deep breath and feel the cool air. And by the way, um, what I'm describing 
sensations know that uh, Sunday I'll have Sunday coffee. I'll sit out here on the porch and I'll write it for you. And if you want to get that, go to coffeewitheric.com. And that's something I write every week. All right. Enjoy. Goodbye. figure out how to turn this thing off. All right, you guys. See you later. Bye, YouTubers. Oh, here comes a boat. Maybe you get to see the boat. Maybe. It's out there. It's going to come by. Here it comes. It's going to go by real quickly, right through the trees. There we go. Okay, you saw it, right? All right, have a great day, bye.